Uh, hi everyone. So we already said quite a lot uh, about random walks, uh, random walks with drift, uh, uh, trend stationary process, and we uh, discussed some basics of unit root tests. Okay, today uh, I'm gonna show you how to do this. Uh, uh, how to apply this knowledge uh, to a real data. Okay, I'm gonna use R, but of course you can use any uh, software you want. I know you've been working with eViews, so I'm gonna also show you how to do some of this stuff in eViews, because in another movie I'm going to uh, explain what will be your task uh, in your midterm. Okay, so, uh, but let's start with uh, what we are going to do here. Okay, first, uh, I'm gonna load some packages, but this is this is not important. Look, and now I'm loading the data uh, uh, for. Uh, uh, I'm loading the data uh, uh, of real GDP for different European Union countries. But of course, uh, we do not have the time to go through all of them. I've just chosen two, uh, and let's see uh, what results we will get. Okay, first, we'll, let's see uh, uh, real GDP, uh, quarterly real GDP of Germany from 1996 till 2019. Okay, and so here you see the graph, but I'm gonna use actually this one because it's much nicer. And what do we see over here? Look, we generally see that the, uh, the GDP has been increasing, which is not a surprise. We clearly see also some downturns. The most important one being uh, associated with the crisis of 2007-2008, but of course uh, prolonged a little, uh, a little bit due to sovereign debt crisis uh, in Europe. But look, we clearly see that we could pull, uh, we could fit here straight line, and the GDP rather fluctuates around it. With uh, 2009 crisis, 2008 crisis being a really uh, special case of very severe economic downturn. Okay, now let's let's look at uh, like the graph for Poland. Okay, give me a second. It's... So, look, in here, we see that this graph stands in glaring contrast with the other one. Why? Look, we see almost perfect straight line going upwards. Well, uh, it, this, this would generally mean that Polish GDP was not struck severely by the economic crisis of 2008. Of course, we see the downturn here. But as you see, see, it's not a big one. We actually, we probably see more of a slowdown uh, afterwards. But still, this line almost resembles, uh, almost resembles a straight line. Uh, th this uh, this graph almost resembles a straight line. Now look, it, let's compare the two on one plot. Uh, Okay, of course, uh, yeah. so look, when we put the two together, uh, we see uh, that they're definitely different. They both have some of the same properties. Well, they, they share the property that they are both increasing, but as you see, uh, the volatility of Germany's GDP is way, way bigger. Okay, 
So maybe we can use this information somehow to compare the two uh, two, G, two GDP time series using what we've learned in advanced quantitative economics. Okay, so look, I'm going to make a graph. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Now, we need to do some calculations. So I'm extracting the data for Germany's GDP, and I'm also uh, making first differences. As you remember, in, uh, in the previous movie, uh, what we had to do is to regress delta y on y minus t. And this is what we're going to do. Uh, 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 this is the first thing we're going to do. Okay, so we also need to have, uh, so these are the differences, first differences. And of course, we need to have lagged value uh, of, of uh, GDP. But look, and in the second, so this is the first equation that I'm going to uh, assess. It's going to be a uh, first difference of Germany GDP regressed on lagged GDP and uh, and uh, a constant, so, so a drift. And remember, in the second equation, we are adding also a time term. So, okay. So let me calculate this. No, well, not me, but uh, you know what I'm talking about. And let's look at the re results. Okay. So we start with a regression uh, with no time trend. And what do we see here? Look, here we see that the value of the parameter is clearly different than, uh, is not statistically different than zero, all right? The p-value that we see over here is zero point, over 0 0.9. Uh, so in this circumstance, uh, we would expect that actual, remember, if this, this is raw, and if raw is uh, equal to zero, this implies, uh, a, a, this, this implies that the coefficient delta is equal to one. So this gives us some evidence that Germany uh, GDP behaves like a uh, uh, like a random walk with drift but okay now let's see what happens uh, now let's see uh, what happens when I add uh, uh, when I add time trend and look when I add time trend uh, uh, now things change a little bit but look uh, uh, coefficient B beta is statistically significant, uh, but only at ten percent level, and the same can be sure. Uh, the, the, the the same can be said about the coefficient on lag the uh, uh, Germany GDP. So look, we get some. We we have very inconsistent evidence from this, right? But uh, let's say that we want to. Uh, go in this direction and see uh, the behavior of uh, Germany GDP assuming trend stationary process. Okay, so look, we can, uh, in order to accomplish that, we can transform uh, raw in back into delta. And remember, the delta is A from our difference uh, uh, equation. So I can use this A to construct a, a, to construct a complementary function. And look, this is what you see over here. I, we will consider only 100 periods. And look, a ADG standing for adjustment. Me, it will uh, show us how uh, Germany GDP adjusted to shock through time. Let's assume that this shock is, oh my god, 
and too many zeros. Three zeros. And uh, give me a second, sorry. Uh, this is three zeros. Another three. So we have uh, 10, uh, 10 million. Uh, uh, but remember that the data was already uh, in millions, so we have a 10 billion shock to GDP. Okay, uh, so what happens? I'm creating, uh, I'm creating the plot for this. So look, now what we are about, what we see, now what we see is the graph uh, of uh, of the complementary function using uh, uh, that we've obtained, assuming that Germany GDP is uh, uh, is a, a transstationary process. So what happens? We, we see. Look, this is the initial shock, and we see that economy, uh, the Germany economy, goes back to equilibrium. But look. It takes it quite a quite a long time to actually go back to equilibrium. Remember, those are quarters. So even after 10 years, well, of course, look, the shock that I've chosen is extremely, extremely severe. But uh, but we see that even after uh, even after uh, 10 years, economy has not reached equilibrium uh, uh, yet. But Let's now, uh, oh, I'm sorry, not this, not this. Uh, okay, let's add some lines for references. And look, what do we see right now? Look, this, at this moment, so we see that half of the shock was absorbed in the economy uh, in about, uh, I want to say, five, four years, right? And uh, and we see that uh, the economy goes back, to, uh, it, like then, here we have that 90% of the shock is absorbed after uh, I, I want to say this is going to be let's just say around seven years and well after 10 years we can say that more or less the shock is absorbed but look this is a very very lengthy uh, process okay uh, so now let's look at the situation for Poland mm. So I'm, I'm going through all the same steps and I'm estimating exactly the same two models now for Poland. Okay, and uh, okay, let's start with the first one. Okay, and look, here we have a different scenario. In case of Poland, uh, the OLS estimate suggests uh, uh, suggest that the value of the coefficient is statistically different than zero, and even at at uh, at five per uh, five percent level. So not bad. So we actually have here some evidence that maybe a uh, trend uh, uh, that uh, that unit root here is not present, and uh, that. Polish economy should not be described using uh, 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 using a random walk with drift, and look and uh, but now when we look at the second model, look a very weird thing happens because uh, now we would expect that that the outcomes for this model will be better, but actually they even worse than in case of Germany. So, looking at those two, we see that neither of these models works really well here. But, look, again, as I told you, we are using here OLS. 
OLS is not the best estimator for this case and we are using T statistic, T distribution. We should be using a DK filler distribution that I'm going to show you uh, in a second. But uh, let's work what we have here now to just see the adjustment process. Now, again, let's go through the same steps. We can use uh, the parameter we've obtained uh, here for lagged Polish GDP uh, to construct uh, uh, to construct uh, 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 to construct graph of complementary function with the same parameters except for adjustment coefficient and we will see how Polish economy uh, is adjusting to the, sh the same shock the, the, to a shock of the same magnitude okay let, let me already add the lines and look I see I, I know that in principle the graph look d doesn't look that much different but uh, maybe when we compare the two you will be able to see uh, that actually let, let me check one thing if everything here is right times three final two uh, oh, oh, okay. I see the mistake. I'm sorry. Okay, so that the graphs are actually looking too similar. Oh, and... Um, look what, what do we see over here. Uh, So, look, here the complementary function goes to, uh, uh, goes back to equilibrium way, way slower. So it dies out slower. Look, in order to, uh, in order to, uh, in order to actually uh, decline, uh, absorb half of the shock, we need will definitely more than five years and uh, even and 90% of the shock is still present uh, in the economy uh, after more than 16 years and even after uh, after 25 years we still have uh, has have its uh, uh, mm, uh, we still see some impact of the shock, but look, uh, what are why where those differences come from? Look, those differences can be explained on economic grounds. Those countries, uh, those two countries, use different type of economic policy to combat the crisis, but uh, it, it, they have different adjustment mechanisms inside the country. So uh, the elastic wage elasticity in Poland and Germany is completely different. Then again, uh, there might be some econometric reasons for that. Look, first of all, you see that uh, the graph of Polish GDP was very uh, was very smooth. So actually, we didn't get to see much of an adjustment. Uh, in the graph. This is why uh, the procedure uh, we used here might not work the best. But secondly, remember that we have not used proper uh, we have not used proper uh, distribution to assess the properties of the time series. Okay, uh, so this is what we are going to do uh, right now. Okay, I'm, I know that you've been using eViews in your econometrics class. So I'm going to use eViews here as well. Okay, let me check. I think I have it here. Oh, it does not work for some reason. Uh, give me a second, please. Uh, 
Okay, a little intermission due to technical issues. Okay, I think it should. Okay, it should work right now. Okay, so I open a views. Okay, so uh, create. Uh, okay, let me open um, the file with the data. Um, I have it in on desktop. Okay. Okay, so now let's check so the properties. Uh, so here we can check the properties of that. Okay, so I go first go to Germany and I go to view unit root test, and we're gonna do the standard unit root test, and this is enough for us. And look, uh, here we have augmented decay filler test. This is the most appropriate one in the context of what we are doing here. And we see that here you have test for unit root in level. Level is just simply the value of the variable. Then we have uh, what should we include in the test? Intercept. Well, we do not look, we do not include intercept if we would expect pure random walk. But of course, GDP is increasing over time, so we need to have at least intercept. Okay, and uh, then we go to, uh, and then, then we click OK, and we see the result of the test. And look, here the null hypothesis is Germany has a unit root. Look, you can think about it as a null hypothesis uh, that raw is equal to zero or delta is equal to one or from the context of different difference equation that a is equal to exactly one and look the p-value here is 0 0.9386 so in in this context we see that this test brings a strong uh, ar uh, uh, strong arguments for uh, the unit root and random walk with drift hypothesis. Okay, but now let's uh, let's you try the second specification. So trend and intercept. Uh, so now we will have both intercept and the time trend. And what do we get? Look, actually, introduction of the time trend here did not uh, uh, did not alleviate the problem of unit root we still have the unit root so actually we see that the model uh, with no time trend is a preferable model uh, for uh, GDP uh, uh, here you see uh, all the values from the model you see even though here a uh, time trend is statistically significant we cannot reject the hypothesis that we have the unit root. Okay, now let's do the same thing for Poland. So we open Poland, unit root, and we start with, let's start with just intercept. Well, so here we see null hypothesis. Poland has a unit root 0 0.999. So here we have Look, look, contrary to the estimates we've obtained with OLS, here we have very, very strong evidence that Poland, uh, a, a Polish GDP, 
has a unit root. Okay, so now let's see what happens if I'm gonna add time trend. Well, not much has changed. So again, very strong evidence uh, for uh, 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 for random walk with drift hypothesis. Okay, now, uh, look, this is actually all you need to know for my class, but you will have to write a thesis. Uh, you have econometrics class. So let me just add one piece of information. What do we do? What, what are the consequences of the unit root? Look, when we have unit root, we should not make a regression because we will have spurious reg regression problem. Look, basically, two variables with a trend will always be statistically significant, even though they might not be related to one another. This is why we cannot make simple regression on one of one variable based on the other. We use we go to tools uh, to a tools associated with. Uh, co-integration so we check for common trends but uh, but in general if you want to estimate some regression model or a uh, vector autoregression model uh, we uh, take a different different approach look instead of using levels we can simply use first differences so uh, and look if I'm going to make a test on first differences for Germany, no unit root. If I'm going to do the same thing for Poland, again, the same answer. Look, uh, those, so when you cannot use variables in levels, you just use first differences. In case of GDP, it's best to use GDP growth rate because they also uh, they, they are also going to be stationary. Okay, so uh, in the next video, I'm going to explain to you what I would like you to do instead of a regular written midterm. Okay, uh, uh, see you in the next movie.